Jeff Weiss back with part two of unit two, plant growth environment. And uh, we're going to spend a couple of slides uh, talking about uh, greenhouses and other uh, structures for uh, plant propagation. The idea of all of these is to create conditions uh, for growth needed to be ideal during prop propagation. So all of the things uh, mentioned earlier, light, temperature, water, humidity, etc., need to be uh, controlled in order to promote uh, optimal plant growth. However, these conditions also um, may be ideal for pests, diseases, um, things like fungi, insects, mites, and weeds. So um, uh, control of those things will be covered next week when we talk about integrated pest management, but um, uh, the more ideal uh, conditions are for plants and the more plants of one specific species or variety are located in a greenhouse or a propagation structure, uh, the more exposed they are to these uh, diseases and uh, pests. So. Um, very important to maintain constant vigilance and to be prepared for these events. Then before uh, plants uh, are um, sold or prepared for uh, final planting, they also need to be hardened off. And uh, what that means is preparing them to be uh, uh, exposed to the more uh, variable conditions of wind, direct sunlight, um, fluctuations in temperature, um, changes in humidity, uh, uh, and there's a definite process of hardening off uh, that needs to be observed prior to uh, sale or planting. So um, three major types of propagation structures. Uh, uh, the, the definitions and the distinctions are pretty loose, but greenhouses, highly controlled uh, propagation structures with Heating and um, uh, usually air conditioning uh, is one type. Structures or systems for extending the growing season or hardening off uh, rooted plants. Uh, these might be um, uh, cold frames or Quonset hut type uh, structures for uh, covered with plastic or shade cloth. And then there's also uh, uh, specific facilities for micropropagation. Usually these are uh, sterile uh, labs or other places where the um, uh, media and the plants can be completely sterilized and grown in a, uh, uh, in a uh, pathogen-free environment. Uh, greenhouses vary widely in their um, construction and level of sophistication uh, from bare bones, uh, some, something you would have in your backyard, uh, to some very, very high-tech structures. And they're used to control uh, almost all of the environmental conditions that were described earlier. Um, most often they're uh, well, they can be built of either rigid or flexible materials, although most greenhouses are, uh, are, are rigid construction. Uh, they can be uh, uh, gable uh, roofs, peaked roofs, or uh, Quonset hut type of uh, uh, design. Um, they can be gutter connected with multiple structures connected at the gutters, such as the photograph up above, or they can be standalone. Uh, they can use a variety of heating, um, ventilation, air conditioning techniques, um, be closed or open or have the capability for open roofs as illustrated below, and uh, use a variety of irrigation systems and uh, uh, control the degree of shading either by the use of the construction materials or by incorporating uh, uh, shade cloth or uh, plastic uh, materials to reduce the amount of sunlight that the plants inside the structure are exposed to. Uh, greenhouse space, uh, it, it, it's a critical commodity. It's very expensive to, con to uh, build and heat and control the space inside of a greenhouse. So uh, how the plants are arranged and the uh, uh, is uh, 
really important consideration. Um, and that can range from pots being placed on the floor to the use of greenhouse benches, getting the plants off the floor. Um, the illustration here is of fixed benches where that cannot move, but uh, some of the more modern and efficient large greenhouses now use rolling benches where all of the space can be used um, and the aisles are created by rolling the benches in order to allow access to them. Um, sometimes uh, double tier benches uh, uh, with the upper level uh, able to be moved outside as possible and in this greenhouse the uh, the second tier of the greenhouse is uh, occupied by the hanging pots that you see so there's a tier well actually there's three tiers in this greenhouse uh, there's a tier on the ground a tier on benches and then a tier of hanging pots uh, suspended from the um, greenhouse structure greenhouse heating and cooling can vary this is the um, the uh, heater that I have um, at the greenhouse at the Nature Center where I work and this is a very small uh, structure. All it has to do is heat a uh, 10 by 20 foot greenhouse uh, but uh, these heating systems can be uh, um, much more elaborate um, and they can either cool or heat all of the air in the greenhouse or um, uh, be um, Heating can be done via uh, wires uh, running through the uh, benches in order to provide uh, local heat to the or bottom heat to the root systems and not have to use the energy to heat up the air uh, surrounding the plants. Uh, solar heat is gaining popularity. The use of solar panels uh, and storage of the uh, solar heat is uh, um, now being used in some greenhouse uh, operations, steam and or hot water pipes uh, connected to a boiler. Sometimes uh, uh, waste heat can be uh, captured from uh, power plants and other operations. Um, perimeter heating pipes uh, can be used to capture heat from around the greenhouse and pipe it inside. And infra infrared light um, uh, can uh, heat the plants um, but not have to expend the energy uh, to heat the air or the soil uh, which is um, effective in reducing energy costs in some greenhouses that use this. So here is a photo of root zone heating. If you look all the way to the lower right hand side you see the wires uh, running along the bench and the uh, trays of plants are placed on top so only the root zone uh, is heated in this case and um, uh, in particular uh, roots need this heat in order to develop quickly and to uh, prevent disease so some other uh, types of propagation structures are cold frames. Uh, they may look similar to a greenhouse, but they do not provide any supplemental heat. Uh, hoop houses are um, uh, seen everywhere now when you drive through the country, and um, they include both the uh, concepts of these uh, large structures, uh, but also row covers, low structures, covered with plastic. They might be a foot or two high and uh, they provide just enough heat to um, enable plants to be put in earlier in the season or extend the season to permit a harvest uh, after um, temperatures have started cooling down for the season. Um, this lower um, photograph is uh, of a um, Hothouse, this is uh, where uh, glass panels are used to grow um, plants and uh, extend the season. Um, regardless of what type of structure is used, heat buildup needs to be monitored. Uh, the ends of the structure need to be open to allow ventilation in order to avoid baking your plants. Uh, here's some examples. Here's some more examples of high and low tunnels um, used for cold protection or to extend the growing season. Frequently, plants uh, that may come out of the greenhouse and go into a uh, uh, a, a tunnel for um, transition or, or hardening off. 
and many of these structures are covered with shade cloth in order to uh, protect uh, plants from direct sunlight. But what they have in common is that there's no supplemental heat or air conditioning. It is just a plastic barrier to prevent uh, 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 sunlight and wind from harming sensitive plants. Uh, low tunnels and row covers are widely used for uh, uh, ornamentals, flowers, uh, strawberry production, and in some areas uh, uh, vegetables such as tomatoes are grown in their under uh, tunnels. Hotbed, basically a miniature greenhouse sometimes with supplemental heat, uh, but normally the heat's provided by uh, uh, sunlight uh, striking the uh, the glass and heating the soil below. Um, hot ho hot beds, hot houses are good for uh, small scale production, uh, but rarely used uh, in commercial plant propagation. So that is the end of the slides, and I'm giving you just a couple more slides here with the discussion question for this week, um, and asking you to. Uh, uh, write about one of the environmental factors that we discussed in this unit. Um, but I would like you to uh, do some research in the textbook or online and um, uh, provide an information rich post on why this factor is important for plant development, um, uh, uh, ways in which this factor is manipulated by, manipulated by horticulturalists, and uh, the implications or the results of this manipulation. Try to find something uh, that one of your classmates has not already um, posted on. And when you reply to their post, try to add at least one pertinent fact about uh, uh, the uh, factor that they've chosen. So um, what I'm trying to do is get you to use this discussion question as a uh, in this discussion board as a way of getting involved, learning, uh, showing what you've learned using research, and then adding and building on your uh, the ideas of your classmates. Your assignment. Um, this assignment is a double assignment. It's due at the end of Unit 3, and it is to visit a local greenhouse. And here's some uh, um, fairly detailed instructions on how to approach this and uh, the kind of report of uh, at least uh, two aspects of the business that you learn about during your visit. So um, this assignment probably could be uh, completed in, in one page. I think one or two um, uh, double spaced pages would uh, enable you to complete the assignment and it's due at the end of uh, assignment three, unit three. And then, uh, it's early on in the course, but I'm interested in your comments, uh, and uh, I'd like to hear from you about, uh, uh, at the end of the assignment or at the end of week three, um, get your thoughts about uh, the discussion board and interacting with your cl uh, classmates. Um, in particular, I'd like to find out if you've used this uh, technique in other classes. Uh, do you feel comfortable with the discussions that we've had so far? And if you have any uh, suggestions about uh, the Wednesday-Saturday timing um, that I've suggested or whether you might have a better um, approach in mind for how to do this. And finally, um, in our lab uh, on Monday night, we're going to have a tour conducted by, um, uh, by D of the greenhouse and uh, um, a discussion of some of the policies and procedures we'll be, we'll be following there. After that, we'll be uh, cleaning some native plant seeds that uh, uh, another class of mine harvested and be doing some uh, seed propagation in the greenhouse uh, and in the classroom. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions or issues.